preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. We welcome you, dear friends, to Mission Live tonight. Please like and subscribe to us, one vision we share. Our hearts and our voices will unite as one. So we welcome, happy welcome. Happy welcome to you. So we welcome. Happy welcome. Happy welcome to you. Welcome one and all to our Mission Live Sunday evening service. We are delighted to have you join us in worship to our God. Before we delve any deeper, Let's acknowledge the presence of our Lord with prayer. Please bow your head with me. Father in heaven, we give you thanks, we give you praise for your goodness toward us. Lord, I ask that you would wash me thoroughly and you would forgive me of my sins so that this prayer may be heard and answered by you. I ask that you're going to bless the proceeding of tonight and that you're going to bless the listeners who are listening so that they can have a wonderful encounter with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As you know, we have been exploring the Ten Commandments through our Love in Action Gospel series. And tonight is no exception. Our focus this evening will be on the Ninth Commandment. If you know it, you can type it in the chat. However, if you don't, I ask you to listen carefully to this little song and see if you are able to pull it out while I sing. Number one, we've just begun. God should be first in our lives. Number two, the idol rules. Those graven images aren't nice. Number three, God's name should be never spoken in vain. Number four, the Sabbaths for our worship and for rest. Number five, we all should strive to honor father and mother. Number six, go get your kids from killing one another. Number seven, life is pleasant when you're true to your mate. Number eight, don't steal and break this rule for goodness sake. It's coming up now. Number nine, don't be the kind who goes around telling lies. Number ten, don't covet when you see your neighbor's house or wife. The perfect ten. God gave the perfect ten. Now I hope you listened carefully. Did you get the ninth commandment from that song? 
it says, Thou shalt bear no false witness against thy neighbor. Now we're going to change gears a bit. Did you know that music has lots of benefits? Music can reduce blood pressure, improve sleep quality, mental alertness, and so forth. So at this time, I ask that you participate with our sisters, Sister Colleen Batiste Pras, Courtney Batiste, Roxanne Bonaparte, who are accompanied by Brother Solomon Bonaparte. These choristers will be ably assisted by our musician, Brother Hamish Daniel. It's song service time. Good evening, everyone. We are so happy that you have taken the time to join us here to worship our Lord and Savior. We are here to lead out in our song service. Before we do that, can you just bow your head with me for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we do thank you so much for your grace and mercy. As we sing praises and honor, honor, to honor your name, we ask that you please send your Holy Spirit to be with us. Bless this evening's proceeding. Bless our voices and accept our worship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our first song is song number 33, Sing a New Song to the Lord. going to sing song number 15, song number 15.
wonderful. You're doing just great. We're going to now turn our hymnals to song number 92. Song number 92, This Is My Father's World. God that has created this beautiful world for us. We are so grateful for that. I'm having so much fun, but all good things must come to an end. So this is our final song. Song number 12, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Give me. 
Amen. Wasn't that wonderful singing? We thank our choristers and our musician for setting us out to a great start. Now, prayer changes things, and there might be some of us who will be classified as what you call liars. But do you know or are you aware that lying affects people negatively? When we lie, we slander individuals with our harmful speeches. Lord, have mercy. If you fall into this bracket tonight, I want you to know that change is possible through Christ and his gracious nature. Because grace will always be greater than sin. Calvary has proven it time and again. Whatever you've done, wherever you've been, God's grace will always be greater than sin. At this time, Pastor Maxine Noel will come to engage us in the intercessory prayer. Pastor Noel. Okay, let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we truly are grateful and thankful for a day well spent. We are blessed by your presence and by your love. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been here this evening to participate in another service to learn more about you. Lord Jesus, we ask, even as we sit in our various homes, that everything that would distract us will be put aside and our minds and our focus will be totally on you. In a very special way, we pray that we would not allow Satan to take precedence in our lives but we will allow spiritual things to be first and foremost in our lives. Lord, in a very special way, we need a word from you. That's why we are here once again. And we know that you would not fail us. So even as we sit, even as we listen to your word, we pray that you would transform our hearts and our minds and you help us to be drawn closer to you. Lord, we pray tonight for individuals that are suffering, individuals that have been plagued with physical maladies, financial difficulties, mental issues. We pray for breakthrough for each and every one of these persons. We ask in a very special way also that you will not just help us with our physical needs, but you help us with our spiritual needs. So Lord, please, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to have a desire for the things of God so that we can be better individuals for you. Lord, we continue to pray for our country. The newly elected Prime Minister have ordered that we should have a day of prayer and fasting, and tonight we want to continue to lift up this little island of Grenada to you. We know that you are in charge, and so we place our lives into your hand. We pray in a very special way for each and every person of this island to realize that now is the time to surrender to you. Now is the time to live for you. So we pray in a very special way that we will make that decision this evening to accept you as our Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray that you will cover the administration of, the, of this island and we pray that even as you have entrusted them to lead this island, that they would not depend on their own strength, but they would depend upon you. We thank you so much for what you would do through these people of Grenada and we pray in a very special way that you continue to keep us as one. Lord, tonight we also pray for the individual that would minister on your behalf. We pray in a very special way that you would speak through him to us so that our lives can be transformed. We pray in a very special way that this word that you have for us would be a word that would change or change the inner man and make us into better individuals. We thank you for the word in advance 
and we thank you for the proceeding of this evening's service. And we pray in a very special way that each and every person that participate this evening in this service will be drawn closer to you. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers today. And we pray that you continue to keep us faithful and true to you. And when you do come, we pray that each and every one of you, each and every one of us will be able to see you and hail you as the Lord and Savior of our lives. This is our honest prayer this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We thank Pastor Noel for his intercession on our behalf. Sing a new song to the Lord. He to whom wonders belong. Rejoice in his triumph and tell of his power. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. At this moment, Brother Shaquille Isaac will come to sing a new song to the Lord.
that was indeed wonderful singing. Thank you so much for that song. May you continue using your gift for God's service. Now I ask our viewers, our listeners, to join me in reading our scripture for this evening, which is taken from Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16. This text is well known and it says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. This is the ninth commandment that we're looking at. I want you to come magnify the Lord with me and let us all exalt his name together. Come and bless the Lord and let his praise be continually in your mouth. Brother Shaquille Isaac. It's your time again to bless us in song. God will make all things new that day. Gone is the curse from which I stumble and fell. Evil is banished to eternal crying again praises to the great I am we will live in the light of the risen Now the nations bow down to see the only sound is the praises to Christ or King. Slowly the names from the book are read. to dread no more night and no more pain no more tears never crying again and praises to the great My Savior eternally, and there will be no more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again, and pray. 
great I am. We will live in the light of the risen Lamb. Oh, praise is to the great I am. We will live in the light of the To give you a clearer understanding of the Ninth Commandment, I ask that you listen to this little poem I composed, which is entitled, The Tongue. That's right, The Tongue. You see this tongue we have in our mouths? It could raise people up, but some it could take out. For some of us, it starts to walk from 11, while others, it's walking 24-7. Oh, my officer, I never knew I had a smooth tire. Or, you see this girl down the road? She hot as fire. We don't have facts, you know, but we spread the news, minding people's business and only looking for clues. Oh, ho, you thought I forgot about the visa? Not at all. Interview there, they lying away, all because they want to go to America. What's wrong with a little white lie, you say? A lie is a lie. One day you will pay. This tongue is kept under little or no control because the owner of it makes lying its role. Some tell lies to avoid punishment, while others, they just want to avoid embarrassment. But what about a lie to keep your family safe? Boy, oh boy. You need to ask the Father for grace. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Repent today because this is what God requires. The Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. If you forget, you have a reminder. Don't make lying become your divider. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Think twice, my friend. You don't want to go down the broad. Pastor Lambert Paul is now coming to preach. Open the word and hear what he will teach. Because the Ten Commandments you don't breach. God don't like this lying thing, so stop it, I say. But you can't do it by yourself. So depend on God. Trust and obey. Pastor Paul, the time is now yours. A pleasant good evening to everyone. I'm happy to be addressing you today. On behalf of the Almighty God, it's always a privilege when I can stand before God's people and to declare His Word. His Word is still life. His Word is still hope. His Word is still truth. And tonight as I stand here to declare, thus said the Lord, I want you to understand that you should not allow anything or anyone to distract you. Because it's a word from God to you this evening. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we give you thanks and praise for your love. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. I pray that, God, that you will be with me. Cleanse me from anything that is not like you. Grant me power, authority, and clarity. Take me, Jesus. Use me. Do what you want with me and glorify yourself in this place, I ask. Speak to the heart of some man, some woman, some boy, some girl. And I pray, oh God, at the end of the message, that they will make some changes in their lives to please you even more. I thank you for hearing and answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. A message for this evening is entitled, God season my words. You see, when I, when I look at the word season, season symbolizes flavor. Season is, it, 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 it appeals to your, your, your sense of taste. Are you listening to me? Uh, so when you hear the word, when you hear the message, God season my words, it means, therefore, that there are some words that are spoken that's not seasoned. Are you listening to me? I remember as a, as a little boy, and I was growing up, and there was a time the economic situation was a little tight at home, and my mom cooked some spaghetti, and she did not put any salt in it. 
But I, we did not know, my brother and I did not know that. So when we started to eat it, we realized, brethren, that it wasn't tasting anything. So we asked our mother, we said, Mommy, what did you put in it? She said, not what I put in it, but what I did not put in it. I want you to understand that this uh, uh, food that we are eating, the spaghetti, it was lacking salt. And salt is a main ingredient in seasoning. It adds flavor. It preserves. Are you listening to me, somebody? You see, by, by nature, salt is a dietary mineral composed primarily of sodium chloride. You see, salt is used as an important preservative, a popular food seasoning. You know, if you try to eat food without salt, it can be very difficult. But watch this now. Salt, the two ingredients that make salt is sodium and chloride, and both of them are poison. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that as Christians, we have to allow God not only to season our words, but to season our entire lives. Hear what the Bible says. The Bible says something very important. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 12 and 13. Hear what the Bible said. The Bible said, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the loss thereof. So watch this now. Once sin controls your life, then you are moved by sin. So sin becomes like the remote to control you. But watch this now. I want to highlight verse 13. He said, neither yield your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. And when you yield yourself unto God, hear what he said, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. So watch it now. When you yield yourself to God, God can control you to do the right thing. Are you listening to me, somebody? So if you have difficulty speaking the right words, if you have difficulty living according to God's standard, it means, therefore, that God is not controlling you. Either you are trying to control yourself or you are controlled by the devil. But despite how far you might be from God, I said tonight you can put your life in the hand of God. And God can control you, young man, young woman, young boy, young girl. I said tonight God can take control of your life. And he can use you as instruments of righteousness to bring honor and glory to his name. You see, this evening we are speaking primarily about the ninth commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. In other words, do not lie. <laughs> Let me share a story with you. I love to share stories. This story about three students. And these three students, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. They had an exam on Monday. <laughs> and they did not show up for the exam on Monday. Uh, they came to school on Tuesday. When they came, they, they planned that they would give the professor a fitting excuse. But I want you to understand that over the weekend, they were partying and they were having a good time. So when they arrived at school, they went to the professor's office and they said, Sir, we are unable to come to school on Monday because we had an accident over the weekend. Uh, we went to our, our friend's wedding and one of the tires in the vehicle puncture and we had some difficulties getting home. So by the time we got home, we were so tired, we were unable to get up to come to do I said, okay, I understand. So the professor said, well, I will still give you all an exam. And he was like, okay. But the exam would only have three questions. How many questions I said? Three. Type three in the chat. Three. And he put three of them in three different rooms. And he said, here's a question for the exam. One, name the bride and the groom. Two, name the tire that got punctured. And three, name the vehicle you're driving. And you get an A. I want you to understand, because they lied to the professor, nobody could answer the question. Are you listening to me, somebody? I say because they did not yield themselves uh, as instrument of righteousness, but they yield themselves as instrument of unrighteousness. And as a result of that, their lies were filled with partying and revelry, and then it was displaying their speech. They lied to the professor. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that people lie for many different reasons. I'll give you quick nine reasons why the people lie. One, to avoid being punished. Two, to obtain a reward not otherwise, not otherwise readily obtainable. Three, to protect another person from being punished. Four, to protect oneself from the threat of physical harm. Five, to win the admiration of others. Six, to get out of an awkward social situation. Seven, to avoid embarrassment. 
A to, to maintain privacy without notifying others of that intention. And nine, to exercise power over others by controlling the information that the target has. I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that people just lie for all kinds of reasons. But I was a little boy when I was growing up. You know what my mom said to me? She said, speak the truth and cause it what it will. Because what happened in life is that when you tell one lie, you have to tell the next lie to cover that lie. You listen to me? And when you lie, you have to remember the lie that you told. Because remember, the lie you told was a lie. So if you forget the lie, you have to lie. And are you listening to me, somebody? You have to lie and not a lie in order to fix up the lie. But it's just simple, brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to so just speak the truth. In fact, the Bible says, Jesus uh, uh, says, uh, the, the, the Bible declared in, in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16, and we go straight to verse 16 and verse 19. He said, there are six things that the Lord hates. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, uh, unto him. But we're going straight to verse 19. Verse 19 says, a false witness that speaketh lies. God hate lies. And if you're a liar, I say God will hate liars. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you have struggled in speaking the truth, I say yield your life to Jesus. Why you should yield your life to Jesus? Because the Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. Come on, somebody. I am the way, and I am the truth and the life. So if you have problem, it means, therefore, that the truth is not in you. It means that Jesus is not in you. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So once you accept Jesus, you will stop lying. I say you will speak the truth. You will stop slandering. Are you listening to me, somebody? Because God will create a revolution in your heart. So the things you used to do, you won't do them no more. The things you used to say, you won't say them no more. Because it will be a great change since you were born. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, there are people who think that they can go to church and sing and praise God with, with the same tongue. And then when they leave church, express themselves with the same tongue on the contrary way. Listen to me. The story was told. I don't know if that's a true story. But a woman, she was recently baptized. I, I, I told you, I don't know if it's a true story. And after she was baptized in the week following after her baptism, one of the neighbors molested her. They troubled her. They provoked her. And she, she washed them, as some people don't say. She rinsed them and she hung them up. Lord have mercy. After she finished expressing herself like that, somebody looked at her and said, but you didn't just baptize. She said, yes, I was baptized, but my tongue wasn't baptized. It was inside my mouth. Hello. I want you to understand when God uh, 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 baptized you with the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, the Holy Ghost is from your head uh, to, your, uh, to your foot. I listen to me, somebody. I said, God wrought a change in your entire life. Um, so when you give your heart to Jesus, it's not only your heart. No, you give your hands, uh, you give your eyes, your mouth. Your t- I listen to me. I say, everything I've given to Jesus. And as a result of that, he changes the entire man. So here's what the Bible says. James chapter 3 is an important chapter. You can read it in your free time. I can't go through the entire chapter. It says, There we bless with God, even the Father, and there we curse with men, which are made after the same multitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing, hello, and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? No. That does not happen. But watch it now, watch it now. A story was told of a woman. Hear what the woman said. The print might be a little small for you to see, so just listen carefully. Miss Ida speaks only English to God. You listen to me? Scholars cannot fault her diction. Of her graces and prayers, to her, it is the language of, language of holy things. And the giver of commandments deserves a grammar of respectability as firm and as polished as his tablets of stone. Hello? She speaks to God proper. In other words, as people, some people will say, me and God good. So she and God was good. But, watch it now. To fellow mortals, she speaks Creole. The tongue of markets and fields. The language of labrish, susu, proverbs and stories, hot words and 
tracing and pricking. It is a way to get hardy picnic to listen and feisty men to keep off. It is a tongue of belly laugh and sweet body action. And to Miss Ida, it is no bother to laugh and suffer in one language and to worship in another. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, this thing ought not to be of God's people. I want to understand something that the Bible says, our words determine our destiny. I say our words determine our destiny. What the Bible says? The Bible says here in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 17, it says, for by your words thou shalt be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. So based on the things you see, it determines whether you go to heaven or you go to hell. Whether the, the thing, based on the things you say, whether it's truth or, or whether it's error, determines whether you're on the side of Christ or you're on the side of Satan. I listen to me. I say the things you say. So if, whether there is truth or there is error, determines whether you are following darkness or you are following light. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I say we must follow the light, and the light is Jesus. We must follow the truth, and the truth is Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let me give you a quick story that happened in the Bible. The Bible says in Acts chapter 5, I'll read from verse 1 to 10 as quickly as I can. We say, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So watch it now. This husband and wife, they plan to deceive the man of God. Let me tell you something. If you have your husband or you have your wife, your spouse, do not allow your spouse to lead you to hell. Hello? I said do not. The Bible says that the two become one, but do not allow this other one to lead you to hell. The two become one, yes, in flesh, but don't allow that to invade your spiritual life so they're doing wrong and you're joining with them. No. I say stand up for what is right. They stand up for what is truth. I say stand up for what is light. Are you listening to me, somebody? I say stand on the side of Jesus. So she knew and she privy to it. But, was, but what I to understand, verse 3 said, but Peter said unto Ananias, I'm sorry, let me read back verse, verse 2. Say. And he, so they decide what they're going to do. And they said, and they kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So it wasn't everything. And watch this now. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan, who, Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and kept back part of the price of the land? So I want, I want to unfold something here. The person who inspire Ananias to lie Satan because the Bible declares that Satan is the father of lies. But watch, if, watch the part that make my eye pop. You see, even though Ananias came before Peter, the Bible said that he didn't lie to Peter. He lied to the Holy Ghost. Because I want you to understand that Peter doesn't execute judgment. I say God execute judgment. So when he came and he thought that he was deceiving Peter, I say God he was trying to fool. And no man can fool God. That's why the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man so that shall he reap. Ladies and gentlemen, but Peter said, and then I asked, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Why did it remain? Why it was yours? Why did it remain? Why it was where it was? Was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Why hast thou lied not unto men, but unto God? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that hear these things. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, today is not like before. Yeah, you lie and you get away. You lie and it seems as though you could lie again and lie again and lie again. But the time will come when you will tell your last lie. Are you listening to me, somebody? And that time when you give up the ghost and show that you have fixed it up with God. And show that you have changed and show that you have, you have surrendered your life to God. I say stop lying and speak the truth, brothers and sisters. And the Bible says in verse 6, And the young men arose and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours... When his wife, not knowing 
what was done came in. So I could imagine she came in with all the pride and all the, the hope that, hey, Ananias boy, I supporting you. I have your back. Hey, listen to me. So the woman came with confidence, not knowing that her husband was already a dead man. And she came in, and Peter said unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yeah, for so much. And the Bible says in verse 9, then Peter said unto her, How is it that, that, that you have agreed together to tame the Spirit of the Lord? The Spirit of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. When you lie, you're not lying to man. Yes, you might think you deceive somebody. You might lie and you think you escape from a situation. I say stop lying. I say because you're not lying to man, but you are lying to the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of God is pleading with you to stop the lies and speak the truth. Some of you, some of us, we tell white lies and we laugh and we say, hey, joke I'm making, hello. I say speak the truth, man, and cause it what it will. I say speak the truth. Why? Because Jesus is the truth. And if you are following Jesus, I say you should always speak the truth. I say, behold, the feet of them which had buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Verse 10 said, then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead, and carrying her foot, buried her by her husband. Two liars died the same day. Two liars, husband and wife, lied to the Holy Ghost and died the same day. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to give you some reason why we should speak the truth and then I close. Reason number one, God loves truthful speech and truth tellers. I say, God loves it. I say, your friends may not love it. They'll say, girl, so why didn't tell a little lie to, to help me out? No. I say, don't follow friends, man. Don't try to please your friends. Don't try to please your spouse. I say, please God. Sometimes we try to please people around us and displease God. I say, please God. Because the Bible says uh, that when God looked upon his son, God the Father looked upon his son, Jesus, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. When God look upon you, when God look upon me, when God look upon us, he should be able to say, you are my son, you are my daughter in whom I am well pleased. See what the Bible says? Why God loves the truthful speech and truth tellers. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22, the Bible says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But those who, de who deal faithfully are his delight. Somebody type amen in the chat. I say once you deal faithfully to God, God gets excited. Once you deal faithfully with God, God, God is well pleased. I say once you deal faithfully with God, I say God is elated by your reaction. Number, number two, the second reason why we should speak the truth. Lying reveals a lack of godliness. Because sometimes we're in a situation and we think, hey, if I don't lie, you know, I wouldn't escape and, and whatsoever. Hey, once you are connected to God, you know God will always have your back. And God will do what is best for his child at all times. I say, speak the truth. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 17, he who speaks truth tells what is right, but a false witness is a deceit. Somebody who tells lies is a dangerous person. Somebody who is deceitful is a dangerous person. So God loves the truth. So lying reveals a lack of godliness. Number three, lying is a mark of an, of an unfaithful person. The Bible says, a truth-worthy witness will not lie, but a false witness utter lies. Once you have somebody who always lies to protect you, lies to support you, you're on dangerous grounds. I say you're on dangerous grounds. And as Christians, as, as children of God, God expects us not to be involved in deceitful practices. And number four, deceiving people. And this one, this one, when I, when I was doing the research and I saw this one, this one shocked me. He says that the reason why we should speak the truth because deceiving people in order to get financial help is worse than being poor. You know, sometimes you see some people and they cry in trouble. In fact, the story was told of a, of a man, I don't know how true it is, if it was just a, 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 a theoretical display or something. They said they saw the man in one terminal where the buses pass in the morning and in the evening and dropping persons on to, uh, the way to work and so on. And they said they saw the man with one hand out and the man was begging for help. I say he was begging for help. When the, 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 a guy passed there and he saw him while he was on his way to work. When he came from work, he saw him with the bo his both hands out and he was begging for help. Uh, give me some money, give me some money, give me some. And the man stopped him and said, hey, 
What happened, man? This morning when I was passing, I saw you had one hand out, and this evening you have two hand out. He said, you don't know what's happening. He said, man, business good. I open a branch. I wanted to understand that there are so many deceitful people out there just begging for money, and they have strength. Nothing is wrong with them. They have no health condition, but they are just lying to people to obtain money. I remember I was in a particular place at a particular time in a particular country. And there were some guys who was coming around, and they had a farm. And he was begging for contribution. And the man said that he has a daughter. She's really ill and she needs some medical attention. But in that country, we were informed that once there is not a stamp from the Ministry of Health on it, do not give contribution. So I was, I was safe. And I, I, I was saved from giving contribution to somebody who was begging for money that they did not need. So deceiving people in order to get financial help is worse than being poor. Pastor, where you get that from? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 6, the acquisition of treasure by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor. As you get it, it will go. The pursuit the, of death. So it's not only it will disappear immediately, but also it could cost you your, your, your eternal salvation. It can cost you eternity with God. Proverbs 19.22 also said, What is desirable in a man is his kindness. And it is better to be a poor man than a liar. So it is better to be a poor man than a liar. You know why? Because the poor man will still go to heaven. But the liar will be hell bound. As we come down to the final one, the fifth reason why we should speak the truth. Because liars will perish. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 9, a false witness will not go unpunished. And he will tell lies, and he who tells lies will perish. Where is that place? The Bible says in, Proverbs, in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. But for the cowardly and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the immortal, immoral persons, sorry, and sorcerers and idolaters, you see, I read, the, I read this and I noticed that all of them were just listed generally. But when it comes to liars, he may, he, 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 it is stated that all liars, so not liars and you think that you will escape somewhere, all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I said God is calling us to speak the truth. Because he do not want us to spend eternity being lost. He doesn't want us to go to hell and to be destroyed forever. No. He wants us to spend eternity with him. Lake of fire is not for us. The lake of fire was prepared for the devil and his angel. And the devil is the father of light. Do not join him. Speak the truth. Do what is right. Surrender your life to God. And stand up for what's right. And God will stand up for you. And as I close... Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned. God seasoned my words. So let your speech be seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I don't know what's your struggle. I don't know what is your challenge. But I, I, I want to declare today that God can pass you that salt. God, pass me the salt. Season my words so I will speak the truth. Season my words uh, so I will be honest. Season my words so I will be transparent. Are you listening to me? Season my words so my words will bring honor and glory to your name. Let us pray. Oh God and our Father, give you thanks and praise for your word. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for the power from on high. I thank you, God, for your power that is in your word. Your word it's so clear, dear God, that you do not desire uh, that we should spend eternity. And, and I pray that God, as we, as, as, we, as we listen to your word, we realize, dear God, that you desire that we will spend eternity with you. And not after we look forward to eternity, we are lost. Take control, O oh God. Forgive us, dear God, where we have fallen short. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And help, O oh God, that we will be truthful men, truthful women, truthful boys, and truthful girls. And when you come, we can hear the words from your lips. Well done, the good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you and continue to hold on to Jesus.
Thank you so much, Pastor Paul, for sharing the word. I hope you all will make the changes based on what you just heard. Now we have some announcements for you, so I want you to pay close attention to these. We ask that you join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. You can do this by using the Zoom ID 874-9040-9613. I'll repeat the ID again. 874-9040-9613. The passcode is 013803. 013803. Now using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon and 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Now I ask that you listen attentively again. We have some upcoming programs on Mission Life. On Tuesday, we have Pastor's Corner at 11.30 and the rebroadcast will happen at 8 p.m. Youth Life Unplugged on Friday, on Friday at 7 p.m. Sabbath morning service begins at 9 a.m. Followed by the afternoon service at 4 p.m. Also join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Live Grenada as we continue our Love in Action series where we will be looking at, I hope you know which commandment we are on now. We will be going to the 10th commandment. Now we have come to the end of our service. We are so happy that you were able to join us. But before we leave, let's bow our head in prayer. Father, we thank you for what transpired here this evening. We thank you for using all the participants and also Pastor Paul to bring your word so clearly to us. I ask that you would stir the hearts of those who are stubborn, and I ask that you would help them to make the changes that are necessary in their lives. Help them to choose you every day of their lives. Bless us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's now time for me to say goodbye. So I will do it in a song because as you can tell, I love singing. Adios, adios, adios means goodbye. Hasta luego, hasta pronto. I'll see you next time. Adios, adios, adios means goodbye. Hasta luego, hasta pronto. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you Him. In all the nations, in all the